Good morning and welcome to Midday with Greg. Midday is part of the Church Beyond Our Doors Outreach Ministries here at St. George's in the beautiful Parish of the Blue Mountains, Ontario. This morning I'd like to share a service of morning prayer with you as on this February the 9th, the Anglican Church of Canada commemorates the person of Hannah Greer Kuhn, who is the founder of the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine Convent in Toronto. I'd like to share a little bit about Hannah's faith and history with you uh, a little later in this service. Let's take a moment of silence before we come together in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Allow me to begin the service by sharing an invitatory psalm. Uh, this is a psalm, uh, a reading from Psalm 145, verses 1 to 10. The psalmist writes, My sovereign God, I must exalt you. I must bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you, and everlasting praise will be upon your name. Great are you, Holy One, most worthy of praise, grand beyond all knowing. Generation on generation shall praise your works and proclaim your mighty power. They will declare your glorious majesty, and I will meditate on your marvelous works. They will speak of the power of your awesome acts, and I will proclaim your greatness. They will pour out memories of your great goodness and loudly praise your true justice. You are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and filled with faithful love. You, O Holy One, are good to everyone. Compassion abounds in your every act. All your works praise you. Your loving, faithful people bless you. And now for the proclamation of God's word. The first reading uh, today comes from the Psalms, <clears throat> and it's a, a, an excerpt from Psalm 119. Today we'll be reading verses 145 to 152. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I cry to you, save me, that I may observe your decrees. I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before each watch of the night that I may meditate on your promise. In your steadfast love, hear my voice. O Lord, in your justice, preserve my life. Those who persecute me with evil purpose draw near. They are far from your law. Yet you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long ago I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today's second reading comes from the second epistle of St. Paul to the church in Corinth, chapter 5, verses 6 to 15. And St. Paul writes this, So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether this is good or evil. Therefore, 
Knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer to those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have already died. And he died for all so that those who live might lo no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And the final passage, uh, that is, again, a, a reading that has been commemorated towards Hannah Greer Kuhn, is a very short passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Uh, it's concerning treasures from Matthew chapter, 16, uh, chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. And Jesus said these words, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now allow me to share a little bit about Hannah Greer Kuhn, uh, the person that we're commemorating today. Uh, she is known as the religious founder of the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine. The Sisterhood of St. John the Divine is an order of Anglican nuns founded in Canada in 1884, and it's dedicated to a rule that states, quote, to personal sanctification and active charity, end quote. Now today, we remember Hannah Greer Kuhn, who was its founder and its very first Mother Superior. Born in Ontario, Hannah married an Englishman and spent most of her married life in Britain. In 1887, her husband's business sent him to Chicago, where he died of cancer the following year. Mrs. Kuhn remained in Chicago for another three years. Then she decided to return to England and to try her vocation as an Anglican nun. On her way back, she visited her family in Toronto, and she discovered a group of Anglicans who wished to found an Anglican Canadian sisterhood. She accepted their invitation to take the very first step, and she performed her novitiate, which is entrance into, the, into a uh, convent uh, or a sisterhood. She did, performed her novitiate in the United States. Mother Hannah then returned to Toronto in September of 1884, and she uh, launched the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine. She and her new community initially faced a good deal of harassment, but their work during the Riel Rebellion served uh, the government's uh, hospital fields and allowed for them to overcome the prejudices that were held against nuns at that time. The sisters eventually founded a hospital of their own, where over half of their patients received medical attention free of charge. Later, they established a nursing home for the elderly, one of the first in Canada, and they took charge of a school for girls. Mother Hannah guided these enterprises and the everyday life of the sisters, and she did so with holiness, with practical wisdom, and a sense of humor that pierced high-flying pretensions and unreasonable gloom. She retired from the office of Superior in 1916, and she died on Ash Wednesday five years later. In her life, she learned to be a light which kindled righteous deeds in others, and her community continues into the same work this very day. Allow me uh, to uh, honor Hannah by offering this collect of the day that was written uh, in memory of her. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, you clothed your servant Hannah with the habit of prayer and the robe of wisdom. You had her guide her sisters in this nation in the ways of holiness and the works of mercy and love. Deliver us, we pray, from an inordinate love of this world, that we may be freed for the worship of your name and for the deeds that you reveal through your grace. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together, let us affirm the faith that we've been baptized into in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Liberator of the peoples, fill all who confess the name of Christ with the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Be the joy and the strength of all whose lives are bound in mutual love, and especially for all those who live in monastic or convent settings, as today we remember Hannah Grier Kuhn. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Grant your salvation to all who are far from home, remembering especially today prisoners, exiles, and victims of oppression. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Gracious God, show your kindness and mercy to all those who are facing any trials or difficulties. We remember especially those who are sick and those who are dying. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Forgive us our sins and set us free from all hardship. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Strengthen us in our struggle against exploitation, against greed and lack of concern, so that we may find joy together. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. Heavenly Father, unite us in love and service so that we may live in communion with all of Christ's saints. Holy One, accomplish your purposes in us. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, so that we may trust your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering all of our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our service of worship comes to its close. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the God who called us out of darkness into marvelous light bless us and fill us with his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining with me today for Midday with Gray. I hope that this time of prayer helped you to feel connected to our St. George's community and to feel the presence of God in your life. Blessings in your week. Bye for now.